Presenting History's Best on PBS. Tonight on People's Century, 1949, a popular revolution. The promise of equality and prosperity. But Mao's revolution goes berserk, and a great nation gets caught in a comic tragedy. Great Leap, just one in a series of extraordinary films that explore our century. People's Century. Tonight. Brought to you by Conseco, where we believe that leaping at certain financial opportunities can make a secure financial future harder to grasp. Conseco, our goal is to help you protect wealth, create wealth for life. Major funding for People's Century was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the annual financial support of viewers like you. Additional funding was provided by the Lowell Institute. October 1949, victory celebrations in Beijing. Over 30 years after the Soviet revolution, communism makes a second great advance. The country with the largest population in the world now has a communist government. Photographer Hu Bo is on the platform. The square was full of excited people chanting, Long live Chairman Mao. But there was really only one thing on my mind, and that was to capture those precious moments with my camera and lead them to future generations. It was a special day for China. After thousands of years of struggle, we were liberated at last. What a joy. The crowds in Tiananmen Square hear Mao Zedong proclaim a new beginning. Mao says China will now be free of inequality, poverty, and foreign domination. Almost overnight, one-fifth of the world's people become part of the greatest experiment in mass mobilization of the 20th century. They will be told to work, live, and think in a new way. But in a series of cataclysmic social experiments, millions will suffer or die as they attempt the great leap toward Mao's new society. For the first half of the 20th century, most Chinese still lived in ways that had remained unchanged for generations. 
Four out of five worked on the land in desperate poverty. Most were in debt to landowners or moneylenders. In the west of China, Hu Ben Shu's family were landless laborers. It was a hard life. We had very little to live on. I wove cloth day and night to make ends meet. We could only just scrape by. In the past, there was justice for the rich, but nothing for the poor. Who cared about us then? Nobody. You can't believe how badly the poor were treated. The need to tackle rural poverty and modernize was recognized in the 1920s. President Chiang Kai-shek re-established a central government, ending the turmoil between rival warlords. His nationalist party drew support from Chinese businessmen and the landowners in the countryside. Foreigners were allowed to keep their privileged hold over trade and finance. And the nationalists believed that in time, capitalism would spread its wealth out to the other China, beyond Shanghai and the coastal cities. Nine time in dear old Shanghai, then I'm dancing, sweetheart, with you. But the gulf between the lives of the middle class and the masses of peasants and laborers remained as wide as ever. Jing Jing Zhe was married to a leading Shanghai businessman. I learned how to dance and used to go out with my husband to social functions. He enjoyed playing mahjong and always took a lot of trouble about how he dressed when he went out. As China began to industrialize, low wages and poor conditions increased the social divide. After the success of the Russian Revolution, some looked to China's newly formed Communist Party for a radical change that could shake China out of its lethargy. Starting in Shanghai, the Communists attempted to stir up the city's factory workers. But they were savagely suppressed by Chiang Kai-shek's forces. Those who survived fled to the countryside and were pursued across China. 80,000 set out on what came to be called the Long March. Fewer than 8,000 survived. From their camp in the caves of Yan'an, their leader Mao Zedong planned a new kind of revolution that would spring from the countryside rather than from the workers in the cities. In a short time, he said, several hundred million peasants will rise like a tornado or a tempest. During the Second World War, the communists and nationalists joined forces to fight the Japanese invaders. But when the war ended, a full-scale civil war between the two sides resumed. Mao promised the peasants land reform, and his troops treated them well. When the soldiers first came to our village, I was really scared of them. I didn't even dare sleep in my room. They told me they were the People's Liberation Army, and that I shouldn't be frightened. They slept in the street and were extremely well behaved. By the autumn of 1949, the communists had driven the nationalists out of all the major cities. They fled to the island of Taiwan, taking the country's gold reserves with them. Mao Zedong took over a bankrupt, devastated country and immediately set out to transform it.